What's going on summoners? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. I'm Kangas and today we'll be talking about 10 more skins that are just completely pay to win. Usually when you buy a skin in the game, you're just looking for something that suits your aesthetic taste, but these skins go too far and actually give you an edge in the game. So let's get into it. We'll start things off with what I would say is one of the coolest skins of the year. Storm Dragon Lee Sin sure has some epic lightning effects and when you play as him, you can almost feel how flashy he is. But that's also part of the problem. Playing against Storm Dragon Lee Sin can be visually overwhelming. His model almost looks like a completely different champion, and the animations are so visually loud that it can be hard to even know what you're getting hit by. In a chaotic teamfight, you'll end up being hit by a Q and kicked into the enemy team without even registering that you're about to die. And if there's a Volley Bear or any other champ with similar animations on the same team, it gets even worse. Visual clarity is always important in League of Legends, but it's especially important against a champ like Lee Sin, where him landing a skill shot can mean your imminent death. And that'll lead us right into today's question of the day. Do you think Riot should give us a setting to disable skins? Why or why not? Let us know your answers in the comments down below. And in the previous question of the day, we asked, who's your favorite champion to win with? Well, Swaggy Kpoi Bai said Jax because he loves to power farm in lane with Gwensu's. Hate to say Swaggy, I hate players like you, but I respect it. Our next pay to win skin is for everyone's favorite champion to hate, Yasuo. Since he's primarily played mid lane, this means he's often dealing with a ranged matchup, which makes hitting his tornado a pretty important part of his trading pattern, allowing him to dash in and close the gap to do extra damage. Landing it is even more pivotal to laning when you have your ult, since without a jungle gank, you aren't going to be able to ult without doing so. And that's where Spirit Blossom Yasuo comes in. The Q with his skin appears much smaller than his other skin lines, which can easily lead to unexpected knockups, giving you a little bit of a better chance at taking trades, or just going for all ins. While it's only one spell, it's the most important one in your kit, and hitting those nados is often the make or break factor when winning lane or losing lane. With Syndra's classic skin, the super dark purple spheres stand out strongly in contrast to the colors of Summoner's Rift. But with Justicar Syndra, the translucent gold orbs make it really hard to see her spells against the Rift colors. This one is extremely similar to the classic Varus versus his Arclight skins ultimate, which we had in our last video. If you haven't already seen that one, be sure to check it out next. Anyway, with it already being hard to see Justicar spells in a 1v1, it gets even worse in teamfights, where their extremely subtle particles may make it so you don't even see her spells coming, meaning that you're suddenly stunned and one-shot with her full combo without ever expecting it. Distracting skins are one thing, but for me, playing against near-invisible spells is a lot more tilting. But Justicar isn't the only offender for Syndra. Nope, this champ has two busted skins. Usually when a champ has multiple pay to win skins, we'll lump them together as one entry, but in this case, Atlantean Syndra deserves its own spot. Yes, its spells can be harder to see, especially in the river, sort of like Darkwater Vladimir, but the spells aren't quite as hard to make out as Justicar's. So why does it deserve a separate entry? You can ask any Syndra main and odds are they'll tell you that Atlantean is just the smoothest out of all of Syndra's skins. While this may not sound as OP as unreadable spells, smoothness is a pretty underrated factor in how pay to win a skin is. Take Pulsefire Ezreal for example. After its release as the first ultimate skin in League, you'd think every Ezreal main would have been using this skin. But even after several attempts at fixing it, it's always been considered Ezreal's worst skin due to the insane amount of clunkiness that it brings. For that reason, you've probably seen a lot more of Ezreal's cheaper skins being played than his ultimate one. So with smoother handling and still decently hard to see spells, we have to agree that Atlantean Syndra is definitely the best skin to go to if you want to improve your odds of winning. If you want an even better chance at winning, be sure to check out ProGuides.com and check out our coaches to level up your game. The skills that they give you will give you a much better advantage than any skin could. And if you're feeling the holiday spirit, give the gift of improvement to your friends. From now until the 27th, you can gift PG points and subscription to your friends that need some coaching so they won't be dragging you down so much in those duo games. Moving on, we have Spirit Blossom Ari. In our last video, we already had some Ari skins, but with a total of 13 of them, you can expect some to be broken. While Ari's ult and W are auto-locking, taking little skill to hit an enemy, if you're not fed out of your mind, that won't be enough to burst somebody down. Of course, landing your Q is essential, with the true damage on the second pass being especially important against targets that have picked up some magic resist. But with Q taking so long to go out and come back in, it's pretty easy for most enemies to dodge it. For this reason, hitting Ari's charm is pretty much a necessity when it comes to killing an enemy. Even just in laning phase, hitting a charm sets you up to hit a free double Q on the incapacitated enemy laner. 
So naturally, this skin's charm being a pale, ghostly pink makes it a lot easier to land and a lot harder for your opponent to see, especially if you just weave it into your auto attack animation. Even challenger players hate playing against this skin. If the best of the best can't handle it, it's definitely too OP. With her passive and daggers giving Katarina Shumpo resets, she can be an especially slippery assassin to get a hold of. But with her new legendary skin, Battle Queen, she has yet another tool that can be used to escape a chase. Normally, if you catch up to a champion on a blast cone, all you have to do is stay on the same side as them, and you'll both end up being knocked over the same wall and land next to each other. But with the new skin, if you use the toggle command, which is defaulted to control 5 in your settings, you can actually cancel a blast cone's displacement. This one isn't as over the top as some previous entries, but it does have some niche uses. In some cases, you may even bait a flash as an enemy tries to follow you over with the jungle plant, only for you to air break and drop to the ground. When using Galaxy Slayer Z, one of your taunts spawns a little shadowling thing that sits and waits for its meal as part of the animation. And he's super patient. As long as you don't move to break the animation, he'll just stay in place. So even if you flash or teleport away, he'll remain, as long as you haven't actually clicked to give a movement command. Obviously, if you're using one of those summoner spells in a real game of League, you'll definitely be walking after. But one neat application of this is a temporary reward when you're going back to base. While it's by no means the craziest or most abusable skin on this list, if you're going to recall in the enemy jungle, you can throw out one of your taunt's temporary rewards before you go, giving your team a bit of info as you peruse the item shop. In some cases, this may actually give some useful info as to who's pathing nearby. It's niche, but it's still broken. Sona is one of the squishiest and easiest to kill champs in all of League, so being hit by a CC pretty much guarantees your death on this champ. With DJ Sona, you're actually buying an ultimate skin that can help survive just a teeny tiny bit. When hit by a charm, if you spam your toggle command, which causes you to swap between your different forms, the animation actually causes you to stand still. While this won't fully break the charm, it'll more so convert it into a stun, halting you from marching towards your enemy. Often, even just being stunned can result in your death as Sona, especially versus a bursty champion like an Arya's. But in some cases, this trick may actually save your life. For example, Rakans often use R's charm to make enemies walk into his W. Spam toggling may just prevent you from being hit by the following CC in those instances. Or when you're playing against Seraphine, even if her charm reaches you in the backline, this trick will help keep you out of danger of the mosh pit going on in front of you. Anyone who's had to land against Karma can tell you how badly it hurts to get hit by her mantra Q. Even as early as level 1, the ability just hits like a truck. And since it has such a large explosion radius, it can also be pretty hard to dodge, unless you get behind minions after hearing Karma cast her R. But when using Dark Star Karma, the sound cue for using ult is much quieter, which makes getting out of the way much harder for you. In fact, it's so quiet that if you time it around certain enemy abilities, or they just have their game sound too low, it's very easy to not pick up the fact that Karma is about to hurl a giant Q at your face and take a chunk out of your HP. If you've ever played a Nivea, you know last hitting with her is a pain. Her clunky, awkward, slow auto attacks feel like you're constantly pitching slow balls, and it can actually result in you missing out on some farm. But if you try a Nivea out with her Black Frost skin, she feels like a completely new champ. Her auto attack animation is much smoother, making last hitting with her almost feel like you're playing an AD carry. On top of the sleeker gameplay, her Q and ult are much darker when compared to the bright, almost shining colors of her classic skin. They're such a dark shade of blue that they can easily be overlooked in a teamfight, especially if it's in river. This lets you sneak in your Qs much easier for sneaky stuns, especially when you're shooting them through terrain. And with ult almost blending in with the river, this skin is almost meant for dragon and baron fights, where a careless enemy team will melt in seconds if they're not paying enough attention to notice a glacial storm forming under them. All the skins so far have definitely been paid to win, and all the things that qualify them as such come as features to the skins themselves. Gun Goddess Misfortune is also making this list, but only due to a bug that happened on 10.25 that has also been patched on 10.25b. So we're just including her mostly as an honorable mention. Now this one hits a little personal because I actually experienced this in one of my games and got wrecked. During the patch, if you didn't select a form with the skin, your auto attacks and spell animations would all be completely invisible. Not being able to see auto attacks is one thing, but having an unseen misfortune ult completely covering your team when you're trying to take Baron, yeah, let's just say uh, we didn't smite in time. And just like that, that wraps up our list of pay to win skins. I really hope you enjoyed the video and remember to let us know whether you think we need a setting to enable or disable skins down in the comments below. I can't wait to see you back in the next video, but until then, as always, best of luck on the Rift, stay hydrated, and wash those hands.